Hey there, friends. It's Mrs. Bailey, and today we are going to be learning about different types of communities that people live in. Urban, suburban, and rural. Do you know what type of community you live in? If not, you will by the end of this book. I'm sure of it. As always, I'll put my cursor down like that, so if you're lost, you can catch up. I encourage you to follow along because it can help you become a better reader. And we're going to dive right on in. It says, do you know what a community is? A community is a group of people living in a particular area. Communities can be large or small, crowded or roomy. It all depends on where it's at. Do you know what types of things you might see in a community? Use the definition above and see if you can figure it out while looking at the pictures on the next page. And it says, which of these things would you see in a community? Do you think you would see a house in a community? Well, if we use the definition, which is a group of people living in a particular area, then sure, we would could see a house in a community. People have to live in a home. How about an iceberg? No, people don't live right there near icebergs. A barn? Certainly, you see barns on farms. So a barn would be in a community. How about a school bus? Sure, children ride on school buses, so it's definitely in a community. It's where people live. What about a big city? Absolutely, people go to work in those big buildings. Plus, we see this guy walking down the street. So sure, that's in a community. Do people live near volcanoes, right, by volcanoes? No, so I don't think that would be a community. Now that you're getting the idea of what a community is, let's take a look at three different types of communities. We have urban, right? looks like a big city. We have suburban, kind of looks like a neighborhood. And we have rural. I only see one house way out there in the distance and a lot of, it looks like a big, huge garden or farming area. So it kind of gives you a peek into what the different types of communities are. An urban community is a city. Urban areas are very crowded with both people and buildings. In urban areas, you'll see tall buildings or skyscrapers, lots of traffic, and a lot of people. There's not very much elbow room in urban areas, so the people who live there usually live in apartment buildings. Some people may live in houses, but if they do, their homes are very close together with little to no green space or yards or gardens. So this right here, elbow room, do you know what it means when it says there's not very much elbow room? Think about it like this. If you're sitting at the lunchroom table and people are on both sides of you and they're super close, it's hard for you to eat. It's hard for you to move your arms. You can't really move your elbows. It's because it's really crowded. There's not a lot of elbow room. So that's what it means when it, said a, when it says a city or a big urban area is crowded and it doesn't have much elbow room. The mode of transportation in urban areas is varied, meaning there are many ways to get around. Subways, trains, buses, and taxis. A lot of taxis. But since everything is so close together, many people simply walk from place to place, choosing not to drive their own cars because parking can be a big problem. I see a lot of taxis here in this city. And subways, if you're in a big city, Subways are underground and you can go down to them and hop. It's like a train. You can hop on it and you get from place to place. It has different stops. You have those subways because there's a lot of people there and they need to get around. Um, buses, you see a lot of buses in big cities too. So yeah, they do have a lot of different types of transportation that you might not see in other areas. If you've ever been to a large city, you may also note that it's always busy even at night when one would normally be sleeping. The hustle and bustle seems to never end. Hustle and bustle. That means it's always busy. And at night, say 11 o'clock, when you're in your bed sound asleep, sleeping for the next day to get up and go to school or camp or wherever you're going to go, 
the big city, all the lights may still be shining and people may be still on the streets. There's a lot of hustle and bustle. Unlike urban communities, suburban communities are a little more laid back. That means they're a little more relaxed. Suburban communities are often called the suburbs and they're located near the city or urban area, but aren't nearly as crowded and busy. The homes are larger spaced out more and have yards or gardens for children to play in. I see sidewalks here that people can walk down or ride their bikes. I see a little road going through this neighborhood. There are houses and they're kind of near each other, but they're not right on top of each other. And I see that they have a front yard and a backyard. There are buildings and businesses in the suburbs, but they're not huge skyscrapers like in the city and they're spaced out more. People usually need their cars to drive from place to place, and some may even commute or travel to the city for work. There's a lot more elbow room in the suburbs than there is in the city or urban area. So people in the suburbs may commute to the city for work. Drive That means they drive to there and they drive from there to get back home. And you definitely have buildings in the suburbs, like this right here, Publix. That's a local grocery store chain um, in the southeast. So people go to the grocery store to get their groceries, but they're going to drive there. They're not going to walk because it may be three miles from their house. And if it's really cold or really hot, they're not going to want to walk three miles to get a lot of groceries and then walk back home. Plus, they're usually buying for the whole week. The last type of community we'll be talking about are rural communities. Rural communities are away from both urban and suburban communities, and there are far less people and buildings in these areas. There's a ton of green space, and it's not crowded at all. Unlike suburban communities, there are no neighborhoods. In fact, many people may live miles away from each other as everything is spread out. I see this one house way back there in the distance. I don't see other houses around it. I see trees and a lot of green space. There is a paved road that goes to it, but I know that in rural communities, there are a lot of dirt roads too. As a matter of fact, to get around, sometimes you need a big truck because you're going down those dirt roads. And also, I know that in rural communities, you may see a lot more tractors than you would say in a suburban or urban community. Why do you think people might use a tractor in a rural community? Well, you have all this green space. So chances are people may be growing things. Um, you see, look right, right over here, there's animals. They may be hauling hay or feed to their animals. So yeah, you would see a lot more tractors. You would even see a lot more, lot more of pickup trucks because they're hauling stuff in pickup trucks. Now, of course, you see those in suburban and urban areas too, but probably a lot more in the rural areas. Since it's not nearly as congested or populated in rural communities, one may see a lot of animals in these areas, not just in the forests or wooded parts, but also on farms. Farming or agriculture is a big part of rural communities. Many people in these communities grow and harvest crops and raise animals to provide food for themselves as well as to sell to others, such as farmers markets or, and grocery stores. That's what we were just talking about, why they, might, why they might need tractors. So the food that's grown in a rural community may be sold to a grocery store in a suburban or urban community. That Publix that we saw in that suburban community may rely on these rural communities to grow their food and they may sell them, sell it there. It's easy to see how the different communities can be dependent on one another for their different needs. I can totally see that. These three main types of communities, urban, suburban, and rural, create different living experiences for the people who live there. It also creates an environment where the people who live in each area develop a sense of community with the people who live near them. That's a different definition for the word community. Kind of similar, but a little different. 
This means they may have similar interests, goals, needs, and wants. For example, the people who live in rural communities probably feel the need to live in nature, to connect with the land, and to have the freedom to take care of their property the way they want to. This is very different from people who choose to live in urban areas. What do you think some of the similarities for people living in urban areas may be? So, the people who live in the rural areas, you can see, they may like to farm, they may like a lot of green space, they may like the super laid back style of a rural area. So why do you think people may choose to live in an urban area where there's a lot of hustle and bustle going on all the time, even at night? Well, that's exactly why. Maybe they like the hustle and bustle. Maybe they would like to get up at 11 p.m. and go down and get something, walk down and get something from the grocery store or just walk out and hang with people, see all the lights. What about a suburban area? Why do you think people would choose to live in a suburban area? Maybe they like a little of both. Maybe they like going to the city if they need to, but they also like the green space that they have, the front and the backyards, the sidewalks, the, the ability to get out and walk in nature. What type of community do you live in? Have you figured it out yet? I bet you have. So we're going to play a little game here. Urban, suburban, rule. Do you know? Okay, let's look at this first picture. It's a picture of a house. Well, I see a lot of trees behind the house. I see a lot of green space in front of the house. I don't see any other homes around it. I don't see any vehicles at all, and I don't see any sidewalks. I think that's rule. What about this one? That's easy to figure out. That's definitely a big city. So that's urban. How about this? This could be suburban or urban. There could there are parks in urban areas, but I'm thinking it's probably suburban because I do see some buildings back here, but they're not skyscrapers. I don't see any big, huge, tall buildings behind it. So I'm going to say suburban on that one. This, ah, definitely rural. We even see the big tractor hauling all of the hay. How about this right here? Looks suburban to me because to have a bake sale, that means they're out by their road, which is probably near a sidewalk where people pass by. And I see a house behind them. So I'm thinking that's suburban. Right here, rural. See all of this agriculture that they were talking about earlier? They probably grew it in that big field. That definitely looks rural to me. Right here. Uh, that's those crowded streets that they were talking about. A ton of vehicles. Urban. This one right here. I forgot to tell you guys, this was going to be a little tricky. I wasn't just going to put a big picture of a neighborhood a city, and a farm. I was going to have you think about it. So this one right here, they're houses, but they are right beside each other. I see a tree, but I don't see much of a front yard. And you know what? The angle of this picture is somebody taking the picture from down below. If they were standing up straight, you would be able to see all of the big, huge buildings behind it. This is an urban area. Right here, this is where the houses are a little more spread out and there's green areas and sidewalks and a street in between them. I don't see huge buildings in the background. This is suburban. So have you figured out what type of community you live in? I'm betting you have. I thank you for joining me today and until next time, have a great one. Bye-bye.